All right, the purpose of this video was to detect outliers in the stock market so we could separate trends from just simple noise in, the, in our data. So here we have the S&P 500 index from January 1st of 2021 to uh, present day, which is uh, March 21st of 2021. We have our adjusted close price here in green and our outliers that are detected with these blue dots. Uh, there we go. And uh, the way that I detected these outliers was by uh, using the machine learning algorithm isolation force. Um, I'm going to explain how that works right now. Right. So here we have our this is just an example data set. Uh, the way isolation force works is that it picks a, a random uh, parameter or random threshold value to uh, split the data set. Uh, so say it would choose a random spot here. It would then um, split this, this data set into two smaller data sets and feed it into this decision tree here. Uh, yeah. So say if we had the left-hand side and the right-hand side, we'd have those two split into these two, into this left node here and this right node here, respectively. Uh, the the algorithm would, would then see if those nodes could be split into smaller pieces. And if it could, it would split those, it would do the same algorithm, it would do the same process a second time. And it would keep on doing this until it has split the uh, data set into um, smaller pieces. And every, every single one of these data points has been isolated to their, to, to their single node. So the way that this could be used to detect outliers is that um, they're usually much easier to be separated. So say if we have a odd point that's, that's, that's out here, that will usually be uh, one of these nodes here or here or maybe in, in the second row. But say if, if it was a point that was, um, it was more of a norm, like here or here, uh, it would be more buried in the, in the decision tree. It could be in the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh row and be much, much, much harder to isolate. <clears throat> So that being said, we go back to our code. Here we have our, um, make it a little bit bigger. <clears throat> Here we have our uh, ticker label for the S&P 500. We have our start date, January 1st, 2020, uh, we, And then we call our extract uh, class right here. There isn't really too much going on. We're just extracting data from the Yahoo Finance API. And then we are formatting that into a CSV file with the uh, ticker label and the start date in the uh, name of the file. Once that is done, we call our isolation force uh, class right here. And uh, this is really where the code starts for that al algorithm. So here we are creating our isolation forest model with and at with 200 estimators and a contamination value of 0.2. So this value here actually determines the amount of decision trees that we're going to be using for our algorithm. So um, Say if we only had five, the for, for this value, we would just have five different decision trees randomly generated from the data set. And then we would take the aggregate value from all five of those trees. But say if we had 1,000, we would be taking the, um, the aggregate value from those 1,000 trees. Uh, well, um, 
while while having five trees would mean that it would be much much faster uh, computation time it would be less accurate and having 1000 would be um would be more accurate with with the with the with the much higher uh computation time we want something kind of in the middle here with uh you know with about 100 200 de uh, de uh, decision trees I often often found that there were uh, diminishing returns after about a couple hundred uh, trees. So here we have the contamination value. This actually sets like actually sets a upper limit for the amount of outliers that we are going to detect for the algorithm. So here we have it at point two. That means twenty percent of our data will be outliers. Uh, once it comes past that that value, uh, we won't be detecting any more of the outliers in our data set. Here we have some basic pre-processing for the adjusted close price, and then we are training our model with that data. And here we're actually testing it with, with the same data because we're actually trying to look for outliers in our old data set. <clears throat> And it actually spits out a uh, a list of ones and negative ones. The n negative ones would be the outliers, and the ones would be the the inliers or the, or the norms. We then have our value counts, which will show how many outliers we have. Uh, it's about eleven outliers and forty two inliers. So that's Seems pretty good. Pretty good there. And then here we, we're calling our decision function of the um, isolation force. This actually uh, de determines the intensity of the outlier or how far away the uh, point is from, from, from the rest of the uh, data set. It's, us it's usually a, uh, a number. Uh, I'm just going to pull it up right now. It's usually a number between, I think it's one and negative one. Yes, it's a number between one and negative one. And the closer it is to negative one, that means the stronger the 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 outlier. And the closer it is to one, that means it's more of a norm, or the stronger of an inlier. So you can see, you can see that too well. There we go. Yeah. So, so, so as you can see here, we have our outliers here, and they all have a negative values for the dis dis decision function. And here we have our in our inliers, which are just um, positive values for our decision function. Now, let's say if we um, we look here and this is probably our strongest out outlier it's on uh march 17th of 2021 we then look at our uh chart here yeah and it's de de detected right at that peak of march 17th of 2021 so i think our algorithm did a pretty good job there of detecting that uh peak in the s p 500 index <clears throat> so going back to our uh, final class here is the analysis uh, class um, all this is doing is it's just, just plotting out this chart here uh, <clears throat> there isn't really anything too fancy except um, I, I did add uh, one 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 other feature besides plotting the adjusted close price and the in the outliers uh we're also plotting the moving average as well this is calculated in pandas um it's done over a value of 20 days I, i've actually found this to be the most accurate for what what we're doing here because this is it's it's pretty short term it's only a few months so i think 20 days would be most accurate value 
So we actually plot this out with this code, and then we'll see exactly. I'm gonna close that. Hit save. Plot that out. And here we have our adjusted close price in green, our outliers in blue, and our moving average of 20 days in red. And it seems that our moving average um, it did a pretty good job of keep, keeping track with the trends. Uh, it seems to be working well with our outliers. And it looks like, um, judging uh, from from this at the S&P 500 will actually be evening out. Uh, there, won't, there won't be anything too uh, dr uh, drastic. Um, that being said, I wouldn't actually use this for uh, investment advice. This is just meant for educational purposes only. Um, but it might be useful if uh, you're looking at studying the uh, stock market and you want to learn more about machine learning.